the idea that in the future design would be very simple, it would all be online and it would enable everyone, even if you've had no design experience, to create professional quality designs. You know, when we were just university students in the time gone by, you know, it was way too big a dream, but by the end of it, we'd literally had to prove that we could become a billion dollar company. Canva boasts about 170 million monthly active users. That's equivalent to almost half of the American population using it. Canva is now among the go-to tools for graphic design. Not just for designers, but also for marketers, developers, or pretty much anyone else who wants to get some quick graphics ready. The design space was majorly ruled by Adobe with its range of products like Photoshop and Illustrator. It's interesting to see how Canva carved a niche for itself in the competitive market and won the hearts of creative people from around the world. In this episode, we'll be learning about the origin story of Canva and the interesting strategies they employed to grow and reach massive scale. Canva's origin can be traced back to Fusion Books, a software tool that allowed students to design their own digital yearbooks. Melanie Perkins and Cliff Obrich were just around 19 when they gave the startup idea a try. Perkins used to teach design tools from Adobe and Microsoft to students to make some cash, as he observed how most students trembled with these complicated software tools. Although the yearbook idea didn't scale due to competition and a lack of resources, they maintained their conviction that there was a need for simpler and more intuitive design software, one that accomplishes tasks with fewer clicks. This belief led to the transformation of Fusion Books into Canva. Perkins and Cliff were seeking funding for Canva and faced hundreds of rejections from investors. In 2011, they pitched their idea to Bill Tai, a prominent venture capitalist, over dinner. Although they didn't secure funding immediately, they eventually persuaded him to invest about $3 million. Interestingly, Perkins took up kite surfing as a hobby just to meet and network with Bill, an avid kite surfer himself. They also caught the attention of Lars Rasmussen, the co-founder of Google Maps, who advised them to bring a technical person on board to ensure the feasibility of building the right software platform with the proposed capabilities. This advice led to Cameron Adams joining Canva as the third co-founder. Now, let's look at some of the interesting strategies that they used to grow to 170 million monthly active users over the past decade. PR boost. Initially, press and PR strategies were utilized to build awareness and generate demand. A waitlist model was employed, incentivizing individuals to tweet about the product to advance in the queue. Outreach efforts targeted numerous bloggers and media outlets for launch articles, resulting in 50,000 people eagerly awaiting for access even before the public launch of the product. Sharp focus on a particular target group. An insight that they had early in their journey was that a lot of businesses in 2013 were becoming more active on Facebook and they had to make creatives to post there. They tailored their product for social media marketers for this particular use case. For example, they added a feature where the image gets shared to Facebook directly from Canva. Improving onboarding flow. Since the majority of the users happen to be non-designers, they observed this pattern of people being afraid to click buttons. To solve this problem, they spent a lot of time redesigning the onboarding flow for Canva and added small how-to guides and a basic challenge to familiarize users with the platform. Leveraging trends and PLG. During holiday seasons, Canva partnered with about 30 artists to create templates for greeting cards. A lot of these greeting cards were shared on popular social media sites and even personally, which ended up driving a ton of traffic to Canva. This way, Canva's early users played an important role in driving awareness and acquisition for the users. During the pandemic, the surge in Zoom's popularity prompted the team to quickly recognize the trend and create a custom landing page along with several Zoom backgrounds. This initiative alone rapidly garnered over 300 backlinks in just a matter of a few weeks. Influencer Marketing Canva partnered with Guy Kawasaki, a renowned tech influencer and venture capitalist, to become their chief evangelist. Guy Kawasaki has about 3 million followers on LinkedIn and is an authoritative figure in the tech ecosystem. His endorsement of Canva helped Canva gain a lot of attention and traction early in their journey. Squeezing the SEO juice Canva has been investing in SEO and content since the start. They created templates for all possible occasions like birthday parties, weddings, Christmas, etc. This content library started ranking really well on Google. They also got some organic backlinks for such high quality templates. In addition, the company employed a dedicated team just for personalized backlink outreach, further enhancing the online presence of its templates and custom landing pages. Partnership led growth. Canva has also benefited a lot from strategic partnerships. Some great examples include partnerships with well known brands like Samsung, HP, HubSpot, and FedEx. 
a notable part of this strategy is the global pre-installment agreement with Samsung that allows small business teams to use Canva's tools for on-the-go creation and collaboration. Additionally, Canva has also ventured into physical spaces with the Canva Design Lab, starting with their home country. It's a retail kiosk that lets customers design and print their projects in store. You might be curious about the company's performance given all the statistic initiatives that they have taken. Impressively, their latest reported revenue stands at approximately $1.7 billion. Valued at around $26 billion, the company's current worth surpasses the combined value of Figma and Sketch, two of the most popular design tools out there. It serves customers across 190 countries, offers support in 20 languages, and nearly 85% of Fortune 500 companies are currently among its paying clients. Have you ever used Canva? If so, we would love to hear about your experience and the use cases that you have. Please share your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, we wrap up this episode of Scale by iTribe. This is Namneet signing off.